the I-10, a major part of the highway in the city of Los Angeles, specifically around town, uh, downtown, was actually caught fire and has now been shut down for an indefinite period of time as they resume construction and they have to rebuild critical parts of it. Let's take a listen to some of the news from there. Fire started early yesterday morning in an industrial area near 14th Street in Alameda. So intense it melted fences and guardrails along the 10 freeway and caused chunks of concrete on the freeway's columns to break away. Two fire trucks were damaged and cars, pallets, shipping containers and more in the storage yards burned. It took more than 160 firefighters hours to douse the flames. Crews were monitoring hot spots into yesterday evening. There was a homeless encampment underneath the freeway that sent people running for safety when the fire broke out. Fortunately, no one was hurt, and the city is helping those that lost their belongings and who need shelter. As for the cause of the fire, that is still under investigation. So let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. This is uh, really no joke about what's happened. Part of the reason we wanted to cover it is that uh, California news is very often criminally ignored here in Washington. And the thing is, Ryan, is that 300,000 people take this road or this section of the road every single day. And now it's going to be shut down for an indefinite period of time. And not only that, it is going to snarl traffic in a place that is famously, uh, how shall we say, <laughs> some of the worst traffic in the entire country. So I can't even imagine you know, what that is going to look like. They are talking about how various different parts of Los Angeles, the uh, 101, and by the way, I don't live in Los Angeles, so if I'm saying anything incorrectly, please forgive me. I'm, I'm doing you people a favor. <laughs> uh, State Route 60, uh, 200,000 vehicles a day will be added. Uh, 101 will have 109,000 vehicles per day added. And the closed section ha currently averages 292,000. So an additional, you know, between Interstate 5, State Route 60, and US 101 is going to have to pick up a significant chunk of the number of cars that usually move through this heavily clogged highway. The reason why I think it kind of fit with this is that there's a ton, a ton of speculation, Ryan, um, that some of the fire, which they claim is arson, um, I, however, I'm not exactly sure what the technicalities behind that are, um, might have been sparked because of this homeless encampment that was beneath it. Homeless encampment fires have been a huge problem all across um, Oregon and Los Angeles, um, in particular where homeless encampments are, I know, I think it's more than a dozen fires in California just in the last two years um, that have occurred largely as a result of like propane tanks mm -hmm. and other unused safe, uh, uh, un un unsafe use of grills and other things in the area. So I'm curious what you think about this, you know, in the context of now that there's a major fire that's broken out, it's declared a state of emergency. There, this combined with the whole San Francisco thing could actually, I think, kind of change California politics in the way they think about these issues. It, it could be. Yeah. And it, part of it depends on how quickly they get this fixed. Like right. if, if we're talking about weeks or months, mm -hmm. this is, you know, this is going to bring, it's, it's, it's so politically toxic that it's hard to even Yes. Kind of find the words for it. Uh, Philadelphia had half of 95. Mm -hmm. We call it just 95 over here on the East Coast, not the <laughs> 95. Right. So we had half of the 95 that uh, was incapacitating. I think it was hit by a truck or something. That's right. And they whipped that thing together in like a, a week or That was two. a big deal for like, Governor Josh Shapiro. He was, uh, he was like, this is the only thing I care about until right. this is done. Right. And because this, it's not just Philadelphia traffic. It's also the artery connecting uh, D.C. and New York. And so they moved quickly and it was up so fast. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how long it's going to take them in Los Angeles, but I, I can imagine that a political animal like uh, Newsom is going to make sure that it moves as quickly as possible. But this, you know, the California Democratic Party is a complete mess. Yes, so exactly. Are, well, also, are they going to be able to actually do it? Are, yeah, and I think this is a huge test for Karen Bass, for Governor Newsom, and others. Uh, so the details of this, some furthermore that we have, is that of the 100 columns along the swath of the freeway that were damaged, 9 or 10 were actually damaged severely, which means that they will have to do some infrastructure tests. And if not, if they do have to be uh, redone, the entire overpass may have to be torn down and refitted or retrofitted, which is, I mean, that's a, a months long construction project. And it really, again, just highlights that you have uh, a significant impact here also from COVID, which is kind of crazy. Uh, pallets of sanitizer had been accumulated oh. during the height of COVID and were stored underneath the overpass, which obviously these things are like pure alcohol um, oh and help God. fuel the flames. <laughs> Part of the reason apparently that it was uh, burning so hot. 
So the current state fire marshal is asking for people to come forward um, for anonymous tips, and they're going through all of that. But the big, the big, uh, you know, question for all of that right now is how are we going to figure this out? They say this is probably the single most, uh, ch- the single biggest challenge that California and LA commuters have faced in years, and that the follow-on effects from lost time of productivity and traffic, for the follow-on effects of lost logistical support and others that everyone relied on this for, is going to scramble the city, and is also even gonna change the way uh, that some people do business. So there could be a pretty significant impact, actually, on downtown Los Angeles as a result of this, even though they didn't do anything wrong, just from you know some people right. saying, it's not worth it, I'm not even gonna go in there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, it, right. you don't wanna sit in that. Uh, hand sanitizer, pallets, right. come on. Yeah. What are you guys doing? <laughs> well, you gotta store it somewhere, I don't know. I, I mean, guess. also, does that stuff even work against COVID? That's a, that, that's, that's the probably, other thing, yeah. It's pro- yeah, it's, and it's, anyway, we don't yeah. need to go into yes, all that. Yes, we certainly don't. Uh, the, only to say, uh, for Californians and LA people uh, who watch the show, we feel for you, uh, and we think it's a tragedy about what's happened there. More, more time to listen to Breaking Points That's in right, car. you have more time to listen to BP <laughs> in your car. So this, you know, let's, let's look on the bright side. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com. Com.